Ladies and gentlemen, today's video is brought to you by Monoprice, who you might already know for their extremely well-made, low-priced, and lifetime warranty-backed cables of all varieties. But today I'm going to show you really quickly some of the other products from Monoprice that I use on a regular basis. Monoprice does pro audio now, so down here is the small soundboard that we use every week for our awesome hardware live show. Up here is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. This one sounds great. We haven't used it yet, but we're going to be integrating it very soon. We also have professional audio accessories such as this boom stand over here as well as the pop filter. Monoprice has a wide variety of power banks. This one belongs to my wife and they have other models available as well. Here's my wife's wireless Bluetooth headphones. So um, these she connects up to her smartphone and then she can wander around the house listening to her music or her audiobooks. It's fantastic. Monoprice also has these tripods here. Did you know Monoprice had tripods? Yes. There's a aluminum one. There's a carbon fiber one. Both of those will convert into monopods if you need them to. There's also a smaller multi-purpose tripod down there and all of those come with carrying cases. Over here is the Monoprice 4K monitor with the glossy screen, and I've done a full video review on that, so you can check that out if you want. And lastly, we have the Steve, Helping Hand Steve model, available at Monoprice soon, right Actually, Steve? Actually, no I'm not, but definitely we're here to support you, Paul, and we're happy to do it. Uh, on top of that, you guys can pick up all of these products at Monoprice.com. Alright, and Steve, very soon. Excellent! What's up everyone and welcome to my second video on Skylake. That's right, the new series of processors that Intel has just announced and should now be available for sale. There's a couple new SKUs that they have launched. There's the 6700K that I have right here, which is a quad core with hyper-threading, turbos to 4.4 gigahertz, uh, and it's available for about $350 US. There's also a 6600K, which is a quad core without hyper-threading. Uh, that one will turbo to 3.9 gigahertz, and uh, that should be about $240 US. Now I already did a video of the first five things that you need to know about Skylake, so check that out if you haven't watched it already. That'll give you kind of an introduction to the new CPUs, uh, the new Z170 chipset and the platform, as well as the use of DDR4 memory, which you're probably going to need by and large, except for a few outlying motherboard models. So for today's video, I'm going to be comparing a 6700K's performance to a 5930K as well as a 4790K with a focus on gaming to tell if upgrading to Skylake will get you any extra performance. Here's a look at my testing configurations. The goal uh, really was to neutralize any variables, or at least neutralize as many variables as I could in order to really make sure that the testing was between the CPUs and nothing else. So uh, first off, for the uh, video card for all the tests, I'm using the EVGA GTX 980 Ti. This is the SC or Superclock version. I'm using it with its manufacturer overclocked out of the box specs, so nothing was changed there. It was running at the same frequency for all the tests. Uh, it's got an EVGA X99 classified motherboard, so this is an X99 socket LGA 2011 3 Haswell E processor configuration. Um, other than that, I have the 5930K right in here. It's being cooled by the uh, Fractal Kelvin 120 millimeter cooler. And then making sure things stay comparable between, between the CPUs. All of my CPUs are overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. So this is a 5930K running at 4.4. Uh, also for all of my three different test beds, I'm running a 16 gig kit of DDR or DDR3 or DDR4 memory, depending on what's compatible. So this is a G-Skill Rip Jaws 4 kit, uh, 4 by 4 gigs. 16 gigs total. Uh, this is actually a 2666 kit, but I was running all the memory at 2400 speed. Uh, so that's my Haswell E test bed. For standard Haswell Z97 uh, and socket LGA 1150, I used this system right here. This is uh, the system that I built uh, last month, and this is actually the streaming system. But fortunately, it had a very, very fresh operating system install on it, and it didn't really take much to transfer over some games and stuff and get it set up to do some benchmarking as well. Uh, so here we have a Gigabyte Z97X SOC motherboard, that's the orange motherboard in the back. Uh, CPU under there, and here's where I, I maybe I'm gonna get some crap from you guys. Let me know if you forgive me for doing this. I know I put 4790K in the title, but I actually don't have a 4790K. So this is a 4770K, which is essentially functionally the exact same thing as a 4790K, just the 40 the 4790K it runs at 4.4 gigahertz turbo boost out of the box. This one I just overclocked. So I overclocked the 4770K to make it equivalent with the 4790K. And I, I'm sorry, but I hope you guys forgive me for being slightly misleading with the title. But anyway, there's my 4770K or 4790K, depending how you look at it. I'm also running 16 gigs of memory in here. This is uh, also G-Skill Trident X DDR3 series memory. Uh, that kit actually, I believe, goes to 2666. But again, I was running at 2400 speed. Um, using the Cooler Master Neptune 240L CPU cooler in there. 
and uh, that's pretty much it. Apart from that, uh, right now it's got a GTX 770 in it, but of course I was running the 980 Ti for the actual tests. And then of course right over here is the main event, although it's less of a main event now because I disassembled this whole thing so I could do video of it and stuff. So either way, let's take a closer look. Uh, mainly what you need to see is right over here. So this is the MSI motherboard I was using for these tests. This is the Z170A Gaming M7. You might have seen this in my introductory video for Skylake or the first five Skylake things. Uh, it's been a great solid little motherboard for me so far. I do want to point out that I'm using a Plextor uh, M2, M6, what is that called again? I should point out that I'm using a Plextor M6E drive in this, which is a PCIe SSD, uh, which is a bit faster than the SSDs in the other uh, systems, but um, as you will probably tell in a moment, that really didn't matter at all. That didn't, didn't really affect the benchmarks. And apart from the motherboard and processor, we of course have this memory kit here. This is the G-Skill Ripjaws 5 kit. This is brand new from G-Skill. Uh, they kind of did a redesign on it and made it a little bit less blingy, at least in the labeling, which which I'm, I'm happy about. Um, but again, this is a 4x4 gigabyte kit, and this kit is also, this is actually a really fast kit. This is a 3200 speed kit, uh, but again, I just uh, set it to 2400 for the sake of the tests. Speaking of tests, why don't we look at some benchmarks? I'm going to talk you guys through these benchmark numbers, although at first glance it might seem like that's not even really necessary. We're looking at Battlefield 4, and if you look at those average benchmark numbers, you might notice that they're all pretty much the same, within about a 3% margin of error. Uh, the 5930K did get a little bit of a boost at 1080, but whether you're gaming at 1080, 1440, or 4K, all these CPUs seem to give you about the same gaming performance. I thought Battlefield 4 might give an edge to the 5930K because it is a bit more good at using multiple CPU cores, however that didn't seem to pan out. Metro Last Light is next, and again, if you're looking at those average frame rates, not a whole lot of difference. The 5930K did seem to have a little bit of ed an edge at 1080. I've also included minimum frame rates here. Those do tend to bounce around a lot, but uh, just there for your reference in case you were interested. Bioshock Infinite is next, and since there's not a whole lot to talk about as far as differences between average frame rates, I'm going to talk about power draw. Uh, the 5930K does use a bit more power at about 395 watts peak than the 4770K and the 6700K. However, and I'm going to switch to GTA 5 here as well, the 4770K and 6700K used maybe 20 to 40 watts less, peaking at more like 360 to 380 as I was testing multiple times. Uh, for GTA 5 though, again, benchmarks are all really pretty much in the same ballpark. Uh, just not a whole lot to say as far as differences in frame rates. It doesn't really matter which CPU you go with, you're going to get good performance. So are any of these graphs going to show any difference between these CPUs? Well, yes. Uh, here's 3D Mark Fire Strike. I saved this one for last because I've also included the physics test numbers, and the physics test is really a CPU bound test that's just using the CPU. So here we can see the 5930K with its six cores pulling out ahead pretty significantly in the physics test, both in extreme and ultra mode. As for the 6700K, it did outpace the 4770K, and here's where you can see those instructions per clock, about 10% in performance improvement that you can expect going from Haswell to Skylake. So there you have it folks, proof beyond the shadow of a doubt, or a shadow, a reasonable shadow, a shadow, a reasonably to prove beyond doubt that Skylake is not really required for high-end gaming, even if you're using a high-end graphics card like a GTX 980 Ti. Now, there are other reasons to go for Skylake other than just gaming. Uh, if you want the new features of the Z170 chipset and the motherboards that go along with it, like USB 3.1 and the connectivity you get with M.2 and all the extra PCI Express lanes on the PCH and that sort of good thing, but don't upgrade to Skylake because you think it's going to get you a lot of extra frames per second. In fact, I would say even if you're going back as far as using Haswell, even Ivy Bridge processors, if you're still on Z77, you're still not going to get that much of a boost by upgrading to the new processor. So upgrade for the right reasons, I guess, is the point of this video, and hopefully you now have a little bit of ammunition to show your friends if they're like, I'm going to get Skylake to give myself a bit better gaming performance, because that's really not going to happen. Now, I know some of you who are on older platforms, let's say you go further back like Ivy Bridge or even back to Sandy Bridge or prior, are thinking like, well, what about if I'm upgrading from those? And fortunately, there's some other really, really wise folks on the internet who have done more extensive testing than I have. So I'm going to post some links in the description to articles from Tech Report, PC, PC Perspective, as well as Hot Hardware. You guys can check those out, and those will give you some comparisons even if you're upgrading from like Sandy Bridge or something like that. And honestly, even then, it's not that huge of a jump. But if you're still on Sandy Bridge, 
I'll say go ahead and upgrade if you're if you're in the mood for it, if you're ready for a new platform, because there's really a lot more performance to be gained. There's a lot more cool new features like uh, PCI Express Gen 3, M.2 connectivity, NVMe, um, USB 3.1. All those are good reasons to upgrade, and uh, if you use your computer a lot and you're ready for an upgrade, I think Skylake is a great way to go. And that is all for this video, folks. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button on your way out, and leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know if you're thinking about upgrading to Skylake. Wouldn't be a bad choice in my personal opinion. Also down in the video description, you can find links to those articles I was talking about, a link to my store where you can buy uh, shirts, mugs, and glasses to help support Paul's hardware. Uh, also, there's a link to Skylake processors uh, at retail, at least if I can find them. There'll be a link down there anyway, which you should click. And as always, thank you for watching.